In this video, we're going to take an analytical look at the snap cut. The snap cut, also called a mismatch cut, consists of two opposing cuts that are designed to overlap but not to meet. The purpose of this cut is to weaken a section of nearly upright stem enough so that it can then be manually snapped free yet remain strong enough to remain in place until the climber is ready to snap it off. When used, the cut has two important purposes. First, if it is important to control where the piece falls, this cut allows the cutter to stow whatever saw is being used so that both hands are free to grab and toss the piece. Second, particularly with larger pieces, there is the risk that when that piece goes, it will generate a lot of movement in the remaining stem. If you're going to be jostled or potentially strongly shaken about, you want to be holding onto that tree, not a saw, and particularly not a running chainsaw. With a properly executed snap cut, you can have your saw safely stowed before that storm hits. When the cross section being cut is fairly small, say six inches or less, technique is not too important. Due to the small diameter, the two cuts may be made fairly quickly. As long as they overlap, the bridge between the two pieces should usually be pretty easy to snap. A bridge may be surprisingly hard to snap if it contains the contorted grain around a knot rather than the straight, clear, vertical grain of a stem. I've learned that you should definitely avoid trying to make snap cuts that include knots. As the diameter of the pieces becomes larger, however, the amount of time to cut, the forces involved, the mass involved, all become greater, and technique does start to become important. So we'll take a look at some of the factors that affect that. First, let's define some terms. We'll refer to the wood which connects the piece above to the stem below as the bridge. The vertical distance between the two cuts will be the thickness of the bridge. Looking in plan view, the overlap of the two cuts will be the length of the bridge. The distance from outside to outside will be the width of the bridge. There are four factors affecting the effort required to snap the cut the thickness of the bridge, the width of the bridge, the length of the bridge, and the position of the bridge. Obviously, the thinner bridge on the left will be easier to snap. Obviously, again, a narrow bridge will be easier to snap than a wide one. Bridge length is a bit of a mixed bag. Wood has stronger and weaker areas, and, particularly in dead wood, there may be pre-existing cracks. With a longer bridge, the snap can choose a path to take advantage of the cracks. Conversely, a long bridge will be able to bend more before reaching a stress that will make it break. If you have to bend it more to get it to break, that is a bit more work. The lateral position of the bridge can make a significant difference in how easy it is to snap. As a minor factor, by moving the bridge to one side, the width of the bridge that needs to be snapped is slightly reduced. As a significant factor, first consider that the effort you are willing to invest only amounts to a 40-pound push, and you only want to reach one foot above your cut. Your commitment will exert a moment of 40 foot-pounds. Assume further that your stem is around a foot in diameter. You will be trying to shear through the bridge at a point roughly six inches from the edge. The bridge will be subjected to a force of 80 pounds. If, however, you had positioned your bridge farther to the left, 
the tree's moment would be reduced to only, say, three inches, and your same 40-pound push would subject the bridge to 160 pounds of force. Positioning the bridge to the side takes less sawing, as you are only sawing through the thickest part of the stem one time. As a second benefit, since you don't have as far to go with your second cut, it is easier to get the right thickness for the bridge. The potential minus is that, if you go too far with your first cut, you may pinch your saw. What we have here is a uh, approximately 30 inch diameter eastern white pine stump. I'm going to use it to do a little bit of a demonstration and an experiment. What I'm seeking is the coefficient of friction for wood sliding on wood and uh, specifically a freshly cut uh, surface of uh, white pine. So what I'll do is I will cut a more or less level cut all the way through the stump and then use a bathroom scale to see how much force I have to apply to push it off and then once I've got it pushed off I'll weigh it and the ratio between its weight and the force it took to push it off will give us the coefficient of friction. Now I don't want the weight to pinch my blade, so once I'm someplace between half and two-thirds of the way through, I'll go ahead and insert a wedge into the kerf, simply to keep it elevated so it won't uh, pinch my saw. Now once again, when I'm almost all the way through, I don't want to finish it because then it'll set on my saw. So what I'll do is I'll cut below that main cut and then snap the piece off. So we'll make one cut a little bit below and we'll have the bridge that will support it so it won't uh, fall on top of my blade and pinch it. Okay, so at this point I have a mismatched cut, basically a snap cut, that needs to be broken to free this piece. It's probably a little on the heavy side for me to try and snap it that way, but what I can do is shuff it sideways. And that way I've got this moment arm acting on this short piece of bridge over here and it will pry it open and snap that bridge longitudinally. So I get behind it here and push and now I've snapped that and now we can do our experiment to see how much force it takes to push this off. For my outside work I purchased a inexpensive little bathroom scales and what we'll do is we'll put this piece of wood and we'll push on the scales 
and see how much force it takes to get this to move. The static friction is the friction that works up until it starts to move. After that point, as it's sliding, that will be dynamic friction. And usually for most materials, the static friction is a little bit higher than the dynamic friction. In other words, once you get it to start moving, it's then easier to push than the effort you have to impart to get it to start moving. So we'll change the camera settings so that you can see what reading we get on the scales. Okay, I'm hoping you can read the scale as I start to push in on it. 60, 70, 80, 90, Okay, so about 170 is when it first started moving. We'll double check that again. Okay, more like 150 on that one. So if you can see that, uh, I've got the piece on the scales, and it's showing the weight at about 185 pounds. Okay, I ran about a dozen tests where I looked at the force that it took to initiate movement of the piece, and I'm pretty dissatisfied with the results of the experiment. The values range from an extreme low of about 60 pounds of force to a high of uh, about 170. Um, the initial tests I ran were all in the high side and I think that's because in the initial cut you've got some surface roughness, some asperities and once you start shoving the wood over those you smooth those off so you end up with a smoother surface for the piece to slide on. So some of the later tests and uh, unfortunately the early tests I had badly out of focus so I, I can't present those to you. The later tests, uh, maybe 110 pounds was average, but I think the uh, early tests show something more like 150 pounds uh, was a reasonable value. And if you're up in a tree, you don't have the luxury of pushing it several times to reduce the roughness. You've got to push it when it is rough, and so having that 150 is uh, probably a reasonable value to look at for the uh, for determining the coefficient of friction of a freshly cut surface of wood on wood. So the real purpose of this was to look at uh, um, how much benefit there would be to cutting an angled cut so that you're pushing the piece off downhill. So we'll go ahead and uh, um, run that part of the test. We'll cut in fairly high on this side, do an angled cut across to be low on this side, and then we'll see what the force is that it takes to push it off, and we'll check that against the weight of the piece that we end up with to see what the uh, effective benefit is of having that slope surface so you're pushing the piece downhill. If you're not uh, cutting for firewood, having the side something other than perpendicular doesn't matter. You're just trying to get it off of the tree. So it could be a significant benefit to having that inclined surface you're pushing the piece downhill on. Okay, not a great cut, but it is uh, sloping at maybe 10 to 15 degrees from your left to the right. And since I was actually getting too far down, I cut a chunk out of the uh, buttress root on the downhill side so that we could slide it. So hopefully this time I'll be able to get a nice uh, shot of what kind of force I have to exert to get it to slide down that hill, uh, that incline rather, and then I'll weigh the piece and see uh, what the uh, weight of that is. I'm suspecting it's probably a little bit heavier than the first piece I cut.
Okay, this piece of wood surprisingly weighs almost as much as the previous one did. Looks like about 182 pounds. So, fairly big difference in how easy it was to push them off on the first push. So, when is it acceptable to use a snap cut and when should it be avoided? Basically, the snap cut is okay to use as long as there's very little moment acting on the piece that you're cutting off. If there is any moment, you want to make sure that that moment is going to be less than what you would apply to make it to fall. You don't want a situation where there's a lot of moment and you do your snap cut getting ready to cut it and it falls on its own, possibly not where you want it to go. Now it can be very difficult to judge how much the hinge is capable of holding if there is some moment. Obviously you can make it a little stronger by uh, having the bridge a little bit thicker, but it can be difficult to predict. In the worst case, you could have a large branch and you're trying to do a snap cut on it, and as you start to make that uh, back cut on it, it actually has enough moment that it's starts to snap down through the stem and catches your uh, lanyard and uh, pulls you in against the trunk and that could be very bad. So basically snap cut is okay if there's very little moment but it becomes quite risky if there's significant moment acting on that bridge.